Ah, we can go home now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Let's hear for Trasia and Dave. We are so blessed, aren't we? Yes. Wow. Well, here we are in November 2019. Wow. So, uh, we, you know, this is the month of gratitude, being grateful for what we are, what we have, what we've done, what's yet to be done. And I... We want to give a great shout out to Deborah Perdue, who uh, sat in for me last Sunday. I think we'll be seeing, be great to be seeing some more of her and other practitioners get up here and do some time with us. But uh, I was out of town at a at a football game, and. Uh, uh, if you want to know the details of that, see me after school. <laughs> I don't want to take up time talking about my football. Um, but uh, go pack. Sorry. <laughs> go pack. Yeah, okay. Uh, so the theme for November is an attitude of gratitude. Happy Thanksgiving. And my talk title today is an attitude of gladitude. That's the word. <laughs> well, that's, that's what that says, but my thing is having a glad attitude is a gladitude. <laughs> it's a word I just made up. Don't you love it? So, so do you have a gladitude about your life? Do you have an attitude of gratitude no matter what happens? No matter what comes in the mail? No matter what messages are left on your voicemail? So what are you grateful for? You know, first thing we do is we look to our material items. You know, I look at my house, my car, my relationship, my bass guitar collection, <laughs> if you're into that sort of thing, or whatever you collect, you know, art or music or whatever it is. But besides your house and your car and your job, your money and your bank account, and I did say relationships, are you happy about the relationships that you have? And beyond the significant other, which is very important to us, but I'm talking about the relationship that you have with what you believe to be the power that created you. And you get to decide what you call it, what it is for you. You know, we're, we're not the church of telling you what to think. We're the church of teaching you how to think differently. <laughs> we're uh, really about progression in the now moment. And one of the ways we do that is we be... We start to be happy for what we are right now. And we have these nice little slogans, you know, respond with love. I want to tell you a little story about what happened with that. You know, we, I came back from a conference and uh, I, I got a couple of these. I put one on my car. I didn't really know where it came from or what it was about. You now there's a whole story about where it came from and stuff. But one of our congregants, um, purchased a whole bunch of these and they're available in the bookstore for two dollars a little push for that <laughs> but there was a write-up in the paper and um, from that write-up uh, I was contacted by a local rabbi uh, Rabbi Wallace McCommon and he said I want to meet with you about this respond with love idea and uh, so we met this last week. We spent two hours talking each other's ear off about what we believe and why we believe what we believe. It was so cool. It was so cool. And um, coming up in December, on the 22nd, is the Sunday before our uh, holy Christmas holiday. And it happens to be the first day of Hanukkah. 
and I've invited him to come and share with us what that's about. So he's, he's yeah, yeah, he's, he's agreed to come and bring a menorah and, and teach us a little bit about what it means. So, um, you know, th this thing just keeps on rolling out, responding with love. You just never know what's going to happen when you start this <laughs> progression. <laughs> so our relationships are our most precious commodity, especially your relationship with yourself and your spiritual connection. So there are great benefits of having a grateful attitude. We can't welcome more abundance into our life until we begin to be thankful for what we do have. Why would the infinite bestow you with more of the things that we're wanting if we're not appreciative for what we already have? This is what's so great about making a list of things that you have and that you're grateful for. You know, I started doing this and then what came to mind, as Spirit always lovingly does, it says, are you grateful for your challenges? Ooh. Ooh. That's a good one, Spirit. <laughs> you have to think about that. Are you grateful for some of the most challenging times in your life? And I had to do some investigative work on this before I could be completely sold on it, right? But as I looked back on some of my most challenging times, they were the most revealing of my nature. Not always a spiritual nature. But I realized that as I walked through those challenges, they were gifts in disguise. They weren't just challenges, but they were blessings dressed up as challenges. <laughs> And the more that I pushed them away, the bigger the challenges got. But the more I embraced in them, the more blessing I got out of them. Anybody relate to, <laughs> if you look back at the most challenging times in your life, you might go, hmm, that's why I have this new insight. I would have never had that insight had I not had the challenge. Can I be thankful for the challenge? And when we become thankful for the challenge, it blesses us. Boom. As I think Deborah shared with you, one of my favorite affirmations is this too is good, this too is God, and I demand to see the blessing in this right here and right now. Ooh, gives me God bumps all over. <laughs> But what, what happens is, speaking this into the universe, when we're presented with a challenge, immediately changes the energy of it. Blessing it is good. This too is good. This too is God. Because if we truly, and this is part of the teaching here, is that we believe everything is God. There's not a spot where God is not. So it's got to be in the challenges too. But when we're initially presented with the challenge, do we look for the God in it? <laughs> you know, when you get that, that letter that says, you know, tax, whatever, or, or IRS, you know, we don't even want to open it, right? We're like, well, let's put that away. I don't know why that is, right? I didn't get that. I want to feel good this week, so I'll look at it next week. <laughs> you know, we, we do that. We play this little game with ourselves. But we need to look at things wholly, completely, holistically at what they bring to us. You know, I you know, recently bought a home and you know, Grant's past lovingly sent me this this tax bill for <laughs> for owning that home this year, you know, and I, I you know, when you sign all the paperwork, you know that's coming, but you don't really know it's coming till it comes, you know, and you go, "Whoa, what's this?" And I was upset. I was like, "Whoa, why didn't they warn me? Why didn't they give me a little more warning about when this is due and how much it is?" And then I thought back and I thought back and oh yeah, I did sign the paperwork, said this was going to happen. And then I was like, okay, what's the blessing in this? 
I have a beautiful home. And because of that, I get to have this bill. I am blessed with this bill. Can we see it like that? You know, as we're writing the check, 800 and can we be okay with that? Absolutely. Now, there's a process in that. <laughs> See, there's a process in healing, right? At first, my hand was not spontaneously eager to write that check, I'll tell you right now. I was honest, you know? I was, I was cursing myself about what? And then I was like, you know what? How blessed am I? I mean, you know, these are first world challenges, right? <laughs> these, are, these are prosperity challenges. Where should I spend my extra money, right? And why not? Why not have that? I mean, years ago, I would have loved to have had that challenge to be able to own a home to pay taxes on, right? But I didn't see it that way. I was scraping just to get what I needed to get the rent for the room I was renting, right? And that was like, you know, pulling, well, we won't get into that, but. <clears throat> so you can't have more abundance in your life until you begin to be thankful for what you do have. The things you want in your life can't come in because the things you don't want are taking their place. What? Mm. Be careful with this one. <laughs> Because I was like, oh, well, I'll just get rid of everything in my life. And then a whole bunch of new stuff will flow in. Well, I hadn't created the consciousness to develop the new stuff flowing in. But I was really ready to get rid of a bunch of stuff. So I got rid of a bunch of stuff. And then I was like, I want to go camping. Oh, I gave that away. Uh, oh, yeah. well, I thought the universe would replace it. Well... Through you, the universe replaces it. Do you have the consciousness, the prosperity consciousness, to replace it? It's like owning a beautiful Ferrari. <laughs> so here's the thing. You have to have the consciousness to even buy it tires, right? I mean, if you can't even afford the tires for it, how are you going to afford... Well, we won't get into that. But it's a consciousness level, right? I mean, you know, I mean, you don't own a dog if you can't provide the dog food, right? I mean, it's just a simple uh, mathematical equation, you know? You've got to feed yourself. You know, it's hard to be a light to the world when you can't pay your light bill. You know, I've been there. I've been there, you know? But it starts there. It starts there. So clean out your closets and begin to recycle the things that you don't use or need anymore. And that starts the flow going. That starts the flow. Don't give away the stuff that you're using right now because unless you have the consciousness to replace it, this is just a, a metaphysical uh, fine print warning <laughs> because I didn't have that fine print when I started giving all my stuff away and I was without because I didn't have the consciousness to recreate it. So you can also place yourself in a better mood by being grateful, by being thankful for what you have. I mean, really, if you start to give thanks for what you do have and look at what you do have, you don't need to go shopping anymore. I mean, you know, we need the milk and the bread and, you know, the TV dinners and stuff like that. But <laughs> I don't do TV dinners anymore. I'm only kidding. Chris is <laughs> rolling her eyes. TV dinners, we don't have the TV. I cook good for you. And Chris is an awesome cook and I'm very blessed. I'm very, uh, let me just count my blessing right now. I am very blessed. No, really. Really. I mean, uh, the, the TV dinners was a step up back where, uh, where I came from. But now I have moved into a whole new level of consciousness. And I'm very blessed. And I take... I don't ever take it for granted. I do not. I am so over thankful. She's like, enough with the thanks. Okay, okay, okay. You will find you are in a much more optimistic state after you've spent a few minutes reflecting about your blessings and feeling grateful for them. 
compassion, and kindness will probably fill your heart. Being grateful is a wonderful tool to attract what you want into your life. So I was a, a compulsive shopper. I still am at times. I mean, we all are. We're consumers. I want to consume. I want to get some stuff. I want my stuff. And then I started looking at what I had. I realized I was going out and buying shirts that I already had hanging in my closet. Oh, that's a nice shirt. That's a nice shirt. Yeah, it's already hanging in your closet. That's why you think it's nice. You already own one. Do you need to buy another? <laughs> think about it, you know? Oh, that's a pretty color. That's a great color blue. Well, you have seven of those. <laughs> one for each day. And you don't wear blue every day, most days. But you know what I mean? So when I look at something I want, I have to check in with what I already have and go, do I really need this? <laughs> And can I go into my closet and act like I'm shopping? Oh, look at this. This is a nice one. Oh, look at that. It's already dry cleaned, hanging there waiting for me. It's my size perfectly. <laughs> so once I started shopping in my own home for the things I wanted to be, do, and have, things got different. Things take on a different energy, don't they? Don't they? So make a list of everything you own and be thankful for it. Start a Thanksgiving journal, a gratitude journal. And Deborah Purdue has a wonderful gratitude journal, a little plug for her. But she's already done the work of laying it out, so all you have to do is buy the thing and fill it out. I love stuff like that. Or just get a, go to the dollar store and buy a, you know, a composition book. And start just, just somehow start writing something down. So why do we write things down? Because it's the first step in manifestation. An idea is just an idea that goes through your head. Once you write it down, it becomes something in the physical realm. And once we start seeing it in the physical realm, and maybe even draw a picture of it, why is that so powerful? Because you move to the full brain experience. You're starting to use all of your 5%. <laughs> Come on. All right, seven for some of us, okay. But we start to use more of our feeling nature. That's where the magic is. The feeling nature. How does that make you feel? Do you feel rich? Do you feel abundantly provided for? Do you have gratitude for what you already have? And can you be thankful for what is already on its way, the truckloads of good that are on their way to each one of us? Truly, truckloads are a common. It takes that much to fulfill a human lifetime. I mean, if we went and looked at one slice of bread, just look at what went into the creation, the packaging, the transportation, the advertisement. It gets to you in moments. This is powerful creation, people. We are using the creation process, the, the creative process, the creative medium to live our lives. And if you don't know what this is, it stands for Van Meter. <laughs> <laughs> kidding, kidding. It is our teaching symbol. And if you take the seed idea, that you plant a seed for corn, you plant a seed for something new in your life, and it starts as an idea. So the circle represents all it is, and the two lines break up the power of the infinite into its three parts, which is mind, body, spirit, or in the Christian tradition, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So the Father's in the top, or God, the sun is in the bottom, which is a result of the Father. And the middle 
is the spirit of wholeness, the Holy Spirit, or the soul, or the soil, if you will, in the plant seed idea. You plant something into that middle part. You pray about it. You think about it. You feel it. And boom, it comes out as something in the manifest world. That's the bottom of the V. Right now, we're experiencing fall. You had, anybody had any leaves experience? No? Well, come over to my house. I got some leaves. <laughs> I got some leaves. Boy, I got leaves. Leaves are falling. If you watch just one leaf, just that one magical piece of God, it's done its job. It's done its photosynthesis. And it dries up and falls to the earth and turns eventually to dust and becomes the mulch that grows the new rose. That's how it's recycled. So you see it goes back. That's that little hook. It's always recycling itself, becoming something new. Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? It's the creative process. That's a very basic explanation. Take our foundations class, and we'll get into that a little bit more. So, make a list of everything you desire and be thankful as if you already have it in your life. Hmm. Do you guys have imaginations? No? No, not me. Yeah, I'm working on it. Yeah. Can you imagine a slice of lemon before you? You know where I'm going with this. Everybody's already puckering up, right? But imagine that you were going to take the slice of lemon and just taste it. Oh, it's good. It's moist. It's sour. Maybe a little sugar to make it sweet. Now, you're really not tasting a lemon right now, but your mind is. Look how powerful your mind, imagination is, right? Do you, can, do you get it? You can smell it, you can taste it, you can drink it. That's the type of belief we have to be about what we want to be, do, and have in our life. And we're, we're so good at it. You know, we're so good at imagining, you know. We see something challenging happen and we go right to, well, it's going to kill me, I'm dead. You know, <laughs> we got to be careful of our using this thing called imagination. This is why when somebody asks me, how are you doing? I go, better and better, better and better. Because that's really what I choose to move towards. And I invite you to start moving towards what you want to be, do, and have. And this isn't... Again, this isn't to do a spiritual bypass and negate what's actually going on. If we're in challenge, let's admit it. Let's be okay with it and go, you know, right now I'm, I'm not feeling better and better. I'm feeling some challenge. And be real. And maybe you want to call a practitioner or someone of like mind that can, who's not attached to your challenge that can walk you through it and go, this is what I see. This is the truth I see with and for you. And that's how we get over the speed bumps in our life. If you want to stay on the speed bump <laughs> and experience that over and over again, which uh, I've done many times, that's your prerogative. But there will come a time when you decide, I'm done with the speed bump and put some more space in between your speed bumps because speed bumps are going to happen in life. It's not what happens to you. It's how you handle it. It's how you see it. It's how you experience it. So be thankful for the truckloads of good that are already on their way to you. Having an anticipation of good attracts good towards you. Be thankful to the people who have helped you and the people who have challenged us. Ooh, ouchie. I mean, I have to be thankful to them too. Really? Yes, really. How many times? 70 times 7. Eternally forgiving. Can we be eternally forgiving? Well, there's times. Simply walking or having your senses smell, sight is a blessing something to be thankful for. Your friends, your relatives, a lover, a partner, someone that appreciates your company, even a pet, 
something to be thankful for. Your possessions, your clothes, your car, your house, a computer, a fine watch, a beautiful TV, all great things to be thankful for. Your job, if you like it, then wonderful. If you don't, like it. <laughs> like it. Begin to like it. Or begin to attract what you do want your job to be. What if you were working in the perfect job for you, making the perfect amount that ha gave you such livelihood that you had more than your than you needed enough to share and spare and invest in whatever you chose see the difference you know it's that story about the the brick builder you know they ask one guy you know what are you doing he said well I'm making some men I'm putting it together I'm putting it in a wall and they asked another guy he says what are you doing he says I'm building a cathedral <laughs> Same workers, doing the same job, different perspective, right? So your health. You may have more or less challenges with your body, but you are here. You are breathing. You are alive. Food. I don't think anybody starved this morning. There are people out there that are having challenges making that ends meet. But we didn't. We are so we don't even think about it. You know, we all have milk or almond milk or something in our fridge if we have a fridge, right? That is so powerful, and we we, we just need to just be thankful for it. You know, not take it for granted. Not that we do. It's just I'm just trying to get a perspective of what to be grateful for. Simply sit somewhere where you're not disturbed, and think of everything that you have realize that you could easily not have any of these things that you do and just say thank you internally and maybe you want to say thanks out loud start your gratitude journal and as Thanksgiving approaches this is a perfect time of the year to be grateful for the abundance of happiness health love prosperity in your life because the relationships that we have are the non-material items. The love that loves you is a non-material item. You can't go out and buy love. You can rent it for a while, yes, but <laughs> you can't buy love. So here's a couple things to consider when we're thinking about what we do have. And this was uh, taken off the internet. And it says, if you have, a f uh, have food in your refrigerator, clothes on your back, a roof over your head, and a place to sleep, you're richer than 75% of the people in the world. If you can attend a church or synagogue meeting without fear of harassment, arrest, torture, or death, you are more blessed than 3 billion people in the world. Wow. If you have never experienced the danger of battle, the loneliness of imprisonment, the agony of torture, or the pangs of starvation, you are more blessed than 500 million people in the world. If you have money in the bank, even a dollar, if in your, in your wallet and spare, a spare change dish by the side of your bed, you are among the top 8% of the world's wealthy. I was like, oh man, I am good. I got a whole bunch of pennies. <laughs> and you know, when we see a penny, sometimes we walk by it because it's like a penny, right? I mean, it's a penny. It's, it's, I know people that throw pennies away. And I'm like, give them to me. <laughs> because when you walk by or throw any amount of money away, you're saying, I have enough. I'm good, God. I'm okay here. But when you take it and you pick it up and you put it in your pocket and get it back into circulation, you send a wonderful 
message to the universe. Says, I'm a player. I'm getting my money in there. I'm sending it back out. Let's recycle that penny. Get it going, get it going, get it going. <laughs> because that one penny put together with a whole mess of other ones becomes countless amounts of money. Right? So when you see a penny, you go, ooh, look, the universe is blessing me with the idea of wealth. Pick it up, get it in your pocket, get it in your purse, and then get it out into circulation. Recycle. Recycle. Be the hook that creates the new idea. Let's be the hook. If you woke up this morning with more health than illness, you're more blessed than the million who will not survive this week. Waking up every day with more health than illness is a special blessing because health makes it possible to enjoy the other good things in life. Since optimal health is our most valuable possession, we need to remember and remind ourselves frequently that the choices we make help to determine not only the quality of our lives, but also the length of our lives. You know that you're all going to live forever? I mean, not in this body, but you were never born, and you will never die. You're going to transition. You didn't know how to be born, but you did it. Somehow, right? you got yourself here. Or your parents got you here. Or <laughs> however you want to look at it, you're here. Let's make the best of it. Let's be grateful that we're here. Let's have a party. Now, in moderation, <laughs> get crazy. You don't remember the party. It's not a good party. <laughs> I was there. Right? So in conclusion, you are so incredibly blessed. You are a creative genius. You can go out right now and spend a dollar at the dollar store and get colors crayons and a coloring book and go to town man you can go to town man you can pick out anything you want pick out your favorite colors and color outside the lines i won't say nothing it's all good it's all within this room but color outside the lines man i was so taught to color within inside the lines i if i got outside the lines i'd have to get rid of that don't show anybody that you were coloring outside the line. That's just not heard of. You just don't do that. Color outside the lines. I give you permission. Draw your own picture and color it yourself. Right? I give you permission to be grateful for who and what you truly are. And you are God in form. It can be no other way. Okay? Don't tell anybody else. This is your special secret. So. Or tell everybody. <laughs> Put it out on the internet. Oh no, here we go. Be a blessing to everyone. It gives others the permission to thrive just like you are. And so it is. Amen. All right, it's time to follow our teaching and go within. So as we just bring ourselves to center, I invite you to bring to the forefront of your consciousness, bring to mind what you believe the energy that created you is. You can call it whatever you want. There is no right or wrong. It is your decision. And to extend that feeling of unity, think about your breath. Your very breath is your connection to life itself. 
that power that started beating your heart before you were even thought of. That power that started breathing your body when you appeared in this world of form that is carrying all the right molecules to all the right place for your perfect physical healing is also carrying the right ideas to that place in mind for your perfect healing. I know that something wonderful is happening by means of each one of us. Regardless of the appearance, regardless of our judgment of it, we just pull back that judgment just a little and be grateful, be thankful for your life, for your love, for your ability to think and know how good it is to have freedom of thought. to watch the waves crash on the beach, to witness a leaf falling from a tree, to be loved and to love. And I know that that power that created you loves you enough to give you a gift of life itself. You have already been given the biggest gift that can be given to you, life itself. And you get to decide how that looks. So as we begin to choose wisely from that place of spiritual connection, something begins to blossom and bloom as who we are. <coughs> something beautiful begins to smile upon ourselves. Connections are made. Healing begins to happen. And we release what doesn't work. Not to deny it, but not to give it any more power in our lives. We just turn into God. We literally turn into the power that created us. How grateful we are how good it feels to know that that which is within us that created us knows what it's doing and we allow it to work its magic upon us. So I release this word directly into that living, loving law of mind where it knows exactly what to do, how to do it, and when to do it, and it's doing it right now. So I let go and let God be God in everything that is, as we affirm this together by saying, yes. and so it is. Amen.